Hello, I'm Martin Oliar from Tahim software team and I would like to introduce you the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, aka UFI for Prodigy CPU. At the beginning, I will try to explain you what exactly is UFI and why do we need it. UFI is a next generation interface between operating system and platform firmware. It replaces the legacy basic input output system, aka BIOS, that has been around for years. UFI was developed to allow support for new technologies during the booting process before the operating system loads. The main benefit of UFI is security and modularity. What's playing a key roles in today's computers? The design of UFI firmware is based on four fundamental elements. The first one is created from reused existing table-based interfaces like SMBIOS and ACPI. The second one relates to platform hardware and represents the non-volatile memory for UFI drivers and OS loaders. The third one is covered by boot services responsible for platform initialization, which can be used only during boot time. The last one represents a minimal set of runtime services needed by host OS during its normal operations. The UFI compliant system firmware must support the six phases. The boot process is starting with security phase, which is responsible for handling all platform restart events, creating temporary memory store, serving as root of trust in the system, and pasting handoff information to the next phase. The second is a pre initialization phase, which is responsible for CPU and DDR memory initialization required for the successful execution of the Dixie phases elements. The driver execution environment phase is where most of the system initialization is performed. It produces a set of boot services, runtime services, and Dixie services. Boot device selection phase is responsible for initializing console devices, loading device drivers, attempting to load and execute boot selections. The transient system load and runtime phase is the interval between boot device selection and running OS. At this point, one may enter a UFI shell or execute a new UFI application such as the OS bootloader. The after life phase is the transition from the host OS back to the firmware. Most of the work was concentrated in the first four phases because they contain a platform specific code. Prodigy CPU will primarily be running the Linux OS. This slide is therefore showing the execution time of UFI services versus bootloader and Linux kernel. As you can see here, UFI runtime services present in memory all the time the Linux kernel is running. And in general, it represents the standardized communication interface described in UFI specification. As a UFI bootloader, can be used existing system debut or grab to. I must note here that there is also a possibility to boot Linux kernel without the use of a conventional UFI bootloader. With EFI stub extension, it is possible to build the Linux kernel as speak of image and run it directly from EFI shell as standard EFI executable binary. You are probably most interested in the actual state of the UFI support for Prodigy CPU. Here we have made a huge progress in the last eight months. And today we have almost completed the Tachyon port of UFI framework, also named as ADK2. We also have a working first version of Open Virtual Machine firmware, which is executable in Tachyon Kimu. For now, it is supporting the PCI Express bus and Virt IO, the USB bus for USB keyboard and USB stick used here as optional boot storage device, the SM BIOS and SPI tables, the Kimu firmware configuration device, the Kimu RAM frame buffer interface and VGA card for graphical output, and can read the memory size 
from firmware configuration device during PFE initialization phase. We are still working on EFI stub extension for Tahum Linux kernel and UFI bootloaders like systemd boot and grab2. In following few slides, I will show the booting process of the open virtual machine firmware running in Tahum Kimu for getting a detailed boot information. I have built the UFI image with debug options. As you can see here, to detect the memory size, match the value used in Kimu. Here, you can see the process of creation of the SMBIOS tables. Here, you can see the PCI bus enumeration with discovered single PCI device, which is used here as storage drive for UFI applications. In this first version of UFI image, the UFI shell starts automatically when the boot process is complete. You can get many useful information about the running platform just from UFI shell. For reading SMBIOS tables, exists a useful SMBIOS view command. As you can see here, similar command exists also for reading ACPI tables. Thanks to support of PCI bus and with WeirdIO, we can run UFI application from external storage. This first example is a basic command line application. The second example is a more complex EFI application with a nice graphical user interface and is distributed together with the UFI framework EDKit2. For better visual presentation, VJ output in the Open Virtual Machine firmware has been enabled and the Tachyum image has been recompiled. To get it working, the Tachyum Kimu must be run with additional options for enabling the emulation of USB keyboard and VGA card. And finally, the added USB host bridge and graphical card are connected to the PCI bus. What you can see here. Now I can run the UI application also used as default boot manager for open virtual machine firmware. The main window of this application is quite intuitive and displays all the key informations about running platform. The first item is the device manager which contains all the configuration options associated with devices. For example, here you can change the resolution of the graphic console. In boot maintenance manager menu, you can create a new boot option or directly run selected bootloader from directory structure. Here I will show you how easy it is to add a new boot option. and how to change the boot order. The newly created boot option is then visible in boot menu. To return to the UFE shell, just select continue and press enter. As you could see here, the UFE image for Prodigy CPU emulator is almost done. Thank you for your attention.